So, uh, it's 2022, and we're talking about Duke Nukem Forever again. Wow. Um, crazy how, how things uh, can be resurrected like that. Um, so, apparently, um, an old build of uh, Duke Nukem Forever from 2001 got leaked. And so people are talking about it. There's some videos on YouTube that you can check out. Um, but I wanted to talk about some of the responses from... Like some key people from 3D Realms, uh, in as a reaction to this leak. Um, but before I get into it, uh, I just kind of want to talk about Duke Nukem Forever. Um, geez, like, um, yeah, some people uh, posted some comments uh, on some old videos of mine, you know, because I was talking about Duke Nukem Forever a lot uh, way back in the day. Um, and, uh, yeah, I was one of the few people who criticized uh, the development of Duke Nukem Forever publicly. And, um, like, I was uh, attacked by a bunch of ravenous fanboys. Um, and, uh, uh, long story short, it looks like I was right and they were wrong. Um, I didn't gloat about it at the time, although I kind of wish I did, because... I, I really um I, I really deserved uh, some some vindication there that uh, it turned out that I was right. Um, now look like near the end I was um, I was kind of optimistic about uh, Duke Nukem Forever and the the game that we would finally get. Um, unfortunately, yeah, the game was a total piece of shit. Some people might be wondering if I ever actually played the game, and, um, yes, I did, actually. Um, it was much, much later on, way lo after I made any of those videos. Um, like, I was kind of just randomly playing some games, and I decided, you know what? Why don't I play this game? Um, you know, I waited so long, so many years, I just, I felt, like, weirdly compelled to play it. And I beat it. Um, I don't want to do like a review of it, but long story short, it was just exactly what everyone uh, already knows about the game, about its flaws. It was an incredibly slow game, um, incredibly boring, incredibly ugly game. Um, maybe one day I might talk more about the, the quality of uh, the game that we finally got. Um, but for now, I want to focus more on the leak, and uh, what these people are talking about. Now, I always thought that Gearbox got way too much flack for Duke Nukem Forever. They got the brunt of the criticism, undeservedly so. Um, and also Randy Pitchford. Now look, Randy Pitchford and Gearbox are, you can say what you want about them in regards to alien isolation and other bad behavior that Randy Pitchford did. I'm not going to get into that, but um, there's plenty of other people who have talked about that. However, they are not to blame for Duke Nukem Forever. I need to make that very, very clear. Okay, It is the 3D Realms guys, George Broussard, Scott Miller, and yes, Joe Siegler, um, and all the, all the rest of the developers. They are the ones to blame, but it's primarily George Broussard and Scott Miller uh, who are to blame. Because they were the lead, they were they were the ones in charge. Um, now, um, another thing I, I really want to touch on very quickly. I know I'm kind of belaboring the point before I'm getting into uh, what Scott Miller said here, but um, a lot of people have been saying that the 2001 build of Duke Nukem Forever is good, and the trailer and like I remember Angry Joe did a review of Duke Nukem Forever and he said you know he was talking about the older builds and he was like I want to play those games those are the games that I want to play not this and honestly I like I'm going to disagree with these people like yeah the trailer for the 2001 build looked cool but then again that's what trailers are supposed to do look at any trailer for like a bad movie or a bad video game oftentimes like I shouldn't say oftentimes but sometimes they can look great it's a just, but it's just a trailer. Like it's it's not an actual game, and that's what like people are too myopic on. I feel like you can't assess a game's quality based upon a trailer, which encapsulates all the stuff that they want the 
the viewer to see, you know, but that's not the full game. Okay, there were trailers to the game that we got that looked great. Okay, but the game turned out to be total trash. Um so please, please, please be be smarter than that. Don't assume that the 2001 build was genius or like a great game that we missed out on. No. Um, and in fact, if you look at some of these older videos, um, a lot of the ideas um, that were in this old 2001 trailer were eventually implemented in the game that we got anyway. Um, so some people are saying, you know, finish. Like, we got to get some modders to finish Duke Nukem Forever, dudes. We got to get them to finish the 2001 build. They already finished <laughs> that game. I'm, I, we already got it. All right. There's nothing to finish. Yeah, there's some different some elements that weren't in the game that we got, like the motorcycle. But ultimately, like a, a lot of the stuff in that version was in the game that we got. Uh, I don't really care all that much about the zombie humans, though. Um, but anyway, um, let's get into what Scott Miller says here. Um, so he's talking about uh, the leak. So the truth about do. DNF, Duke Nukem Forever. Looks like someone leaked a build of Duke Nukem Forever from 2001. Anyone expecting much of a playable game will be disappointed. The game's brilliant trailer from that period definitely overrepresented what was actually playable in the game, which is exactly what I just said. By the way, I have no idea who leaked the build or, or how they obtained it. Okay, maybe a disgruntled employee that you didn't pay. <laughs> that might be it. Uh, Duke Nukem Forever is the game that destroyed 3D Realms and ended up getting the company sold to an investor in Denmark where it is still based. Like, notice how he's blaming an inanimate object instead of blaming himself or George Broussard. No, games don't destroy companies. People destroy companies, Scott Miller. While our games like Max Payne and Prey were keeping the company afloat, Duke Nukem Forever was a constant money pit for the company and eventually killed the original 3D Realms Apogee. So, to anyone else, this seems innocuous enough. In fact, when I first read this, I didn't even think anything of it. Um, apparently, George Broussard was slighted by this statement. Because I guess, like, I don't really know exactly what's going on behind the scenes, but I guess Scott Miller was more instrumental in these other IPs being made, like Max Payne and Prey, uh, that got money for the company, whereas George Broussard's buffoonery, um, you know, with Duke Nukem Forever, uh, didn't get the company any money, and they were just riding on the previous success of Duke Nukem 3D, and so I guess when George Broussard read this, which I'm going to get into later, uh, he took it as a personal slight, even though he, he, Scott Miller doesn't mention George Broussard at all throughout this entire thing. In my opinion, while I was not part of the Duke Nukem Forever project, that's like, that is him trying to minimize his role, because he knows that Duke Nukem Forever sunk, well, like like I said before, you know, inanimate objects don't sink a company, but he's trying to blame Duke Nukem Forever for sinking the company and saying, hey, look, I had nothing to do with it. But that's a lie. As a company owner, I had some good insight into the issues with the game's development. Dude, as a company owner, you had a big say in what went on in the company. All right. All right. We were always understaffed by at least 50%. Well, whose fault is that? As a company owner, maybe you should have addressed that in, like, instead of cheaping out and trying to make this with as little money as possible. Which, by the way, th these guys did not pay their employees at a certain point. You know, They tried to negotiate different contracts with the, their employees to basically get them to work for free um, and scamming them out of money. Both George Broussard and Scott Miller pulled this, pulled this shit. We did not have a good development roadmap. At least I never... One saw one. Yeah, talk to anyone in any bit. Like, this is business school 101. Always begin with the end in mind. Jeez, how incompetent are, they, are these guys? Instead, the project was ad-libbed too much. What that means is George Broussard kept on, you know, feature creep, basically. He just kept on wanting to add new, more and more features because he's, he knew that the game that they were working on was garbage. Because of the game's slow development... When new 3D technology became available, the project, in effect, rebooted to make use of the newest technology causing massive delays over and over again. Long story short, um, their, their games were running on older tech and they were taking too long. Uh, they have a word for this. It's called um, uh, continuous uh, obsolescence. I recognize that Duke Nukem Forever was in deep tr trouble back in 2004 and tried to 
get the entire game developed by a more experienced studio, Digital Extremes, now famous for Warframe. The owner there was eager to take over Duke Nukem Forever from us, and we even had the blessing of our publisher at the time, Take Two, but this idea was shot down internally. It turned out to be a fatal suicide shot. So, again, this, it, like, he's not saying George Broussard here, but when George Broussard read this, he believed that Scott Miller was talking to him. Now, you wouldn't know any of this, by the way. You wouldn't know that uh, he was talking about George Broussard or anything if George Broussard hadn't uh, started pouting and whining and crying on Twitter, which, again, I will get to in a second. Um... So basically, what is he saying? So I didn't know about this, by the way. Um, I didn't know that they were even thinking about just uh, getting another dev team to to make Duke Nukem Forever entirely, um, which would have been a much better idea. Uh, in the end, we worked out a deal to somehow barely save the project with Gearbox Software and basically handed over the future of the Duke brand to them with the idea that they finished the game a year or so. It was released. Um, that was the only smart decision this idiot or either those idiots ever made. Um, not that the game that we got was any good, but honestly, yeah, it, it is good that they, that they released the game uh, in some form, um, even though it was total trash. It's better to know it's trash than to keep wondering. It's a very sad story. Honestly, and, and so many people are saying, oh, it's so sad, it's so sad. I'm not sad at all about anything about this. I'm more angry at these fools. I'm, I'm more like a like angry that people don't blame these two buffoons and Joe, Joe Siegler as well uh, for their incompetence and buffoonery because they are the ones who are responsible for all of this. But so many people blame Gearbox and they shouldn't. Um, it brought 3D Realms to its knees. No, you brought 3D Realms to its knees along with George Broussard. All of our development team left or was released. Of course, you, you screwed up the, the whole company. And the 3D Realms name is now owned by someone with no connection to our past. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. It's better off for it. I do hope that Gearbox can resurrect Duke Nukem at some point. It seems like the obvious move would be to recreate Duke 3D using Unreal 5. If it does well, then start making more Duke adventures while expanding on the Duke universe. That I kind of agree with. Um, although I think by the time they decide to do anything with Duke, they'll probably be on Unreal 6 or Unreal 7 by then, <laughs> but who knows. Um, okay, so honestly, like, I thought that this was a really innocuous post. In fact, it was pretty tame. Um, but you're going to get some deep insight into why George Broussard is such a monumental failure. Um, and why he is single-handedly, well, not single-handedly, but primarily responsible for Duke Nukem Forever failing. Um, like, what a petty... Remember, this is the guy that told the publisher, Take Two, to shut the fuck up. Like, George Broussard is such a petulant brat. And I don't know why people don't criticize him more for being the, the immature juvenile that he is. All right, so here is the tweet that he made. Oh, man. He's so sickening. In fact, I feel sick reading this. Uh, so this is his reaction to what Scott Miller said. Scott's a clueless narcissist whose actions are what led to the Gearbox suit's friction that led us to losing 3DR and the Duke IP. Notice how he's just deflecting all blame to someone else. Now, look, you heard me talk about Scott Miller. I criticize him fairly. Okay? He is also to blame. But this guy is, so, he is projecting everything that he is guilty of. Mind-blowing the nonsense he spews. Not surprising due to the depth of manipulation and narcissism. Jeez. Narcissism. Uh, projection much? You're the narcissist, George Broussard. Least I've had the class to keep thoughts private. He didn't mention your stupid fat name, man. He didn't mention your name at all. Okay, and no one, no one reading that, that uh, reaction, whatever you want to call it, by Scott Miller, would have inferred that he was blaming George Broussard. Now, maybe with my interpretation, talking a little bit about it, let me make this a little bit bigger, talking a little bit about it, you can see how, yeah, he was talking a little bit about George Broussard, but he 
intentionally did not use his name so no one would no one in the know no one outside of the know would know okay basically any most people would not even know that he was talking about George Broussard at all okay and that's fair enough okay he didn't want to publicly denounce George Broussard but George Broussard is a petulant immature brat you know and like i and like i said i believe he's projecting this narcissism onto scott miller now back in the day way back in the day early 2000s and stuff like that i posted on the 3d realms forums scott miller i never interacted with i, I don't remember him ever posting on the 3d realms forums i don't even know if he had an account but george broussard did and obviously so did joe siegler but george broussard was just like a child king just like joe siegler but like maybe not quite as much of a piece of shit but still like a rude obnoxious uh brat um uh, and immature and you can see it here um you, you can see just how bitter and angry he is over how george broussard is responsible in large part to the failure of the company and he's trying to so desperately to blame someone else for it how pathetic and then he mentions near the end here i have so much more to say on this having known him since high school in the 70s you can just see how he uses opportunity to try make himself look better tossing an ex-friend and biz partner under a bus def a guy you want to do business with what a piece of shit he didn't toss you under the bus at all, man. No one would even know he was talking about you if you didn't start ranting and crying on Twitter about it. Like, it's amazing that this guy escaped public scrutiny so much and everyone focuses on Randy Pitchford when it's this piece of shit. That's the reason why Duke Nukem Forever sucks. And I'm going to say it again. I'm sorry, guys. Anyone who thinks that these older builds would have been better. No, <laughs> I got news for you. The best build of Duke Nukem Forever is the one that we got. That's the sad and pathetic news, if you want to be sad about anything. The best version of Duke Nukem Forever is the one that we got. It's very likely, and I'm actually giving George Broussard the benefit of the doubt here. People keep talking about how he kept on starting over because technology was becoming outdated and stuff like that. And I do think that's a big part of it. But also another big part of it that I think is that George Broussard realized that these older builds sucked ass. He realized that they were going nowhere and they were terrible. And so instead, like he didn't want to release a game that he knew was trash. And that's why he insisted on starting over, you know, instead of just releasing the garbage that they had already started. And if you look at these builds, I don't know if the build that was released is the latest build, but it's in a sorry state. It's not a it's not even in a alpha state. It is it's in a pre alpha state where the levels not all, the levels don't even can't even be beaten. Um yeah, it's not a game. It's just an incomplete mess. Um, okay, uh, so luckily there are some people who, they're not going to white knife for this piece of shit. They saw this as the, the garbage pail that it is. Whoops. I lost the thing that I wanted to get on here, probably because it's too big. Okay, there we go. Um, so we got some funny comments from some people who are standing up to George Broussard. I just want to highlight a couple that I thought were funny and good. Cloudy uh, says, this is coming from the guy who kept pushing to remake Duke Nukem Forever because he saw what was trendy in the game industry and wanted to put it in his game. By the way, that two-weapon limit for final DNF was dumb and you should feel dumb for it. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, like, um... Yeah, taking ideas like it's like Duke Nukem Forever. It's it's so pathetic because instead of being its own thing, they kept on trying to copy other better games. They kept on. It's like take your pick. They copied stuff from Half Life, Halo, Call of Duty, and it's just like so pathetic. Why don't you be your own thing? That's what Duke Nukem 3D was. That's why Duke Nukem 3D was so good because it wasn't trying to copy from anything else out there. It was it was its own thing. 
and you just kept on trying to rip off ideas from other people. Man, fuck off. What else do we got here? Some other funny comments. Got a few more. Want some cheese with that wine? Cry about it. Cry about it, man. George Brusor. Guess what? You destroyed me. So why don't you just cry about it? <laughs> uh, one more. How about just one more? This guy says, Dank P Pasta says, Why'd you switch engines four times, George? I don't know what this means. Planet crap. Is he talking about Planet of the Babes? Laugh my fucking ass off. Just explain what you're talking about rather than pussyfooting for years on the topic at hand. It's very crybaby-ish to whine about it years after, especially from a developer. Yeah, how embarrassing. How pathetic. I'd be embarrassed to be him. Um, especially after that rant. Yeah. Um... So, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to give some thoughts about it. Um, occasionally, like, I get some comments from people saying, like, you know, like, I used to watch your videos way back in the day, your Duke Nukem Forever videos. And, like, that actually kind of makes me feel kind of good, you know, that I was part of some people's childhood <laughs> in a weird way. That, um, you know, I was part of the old YouTube era. So maybe this video will bring back some nostalgia. And also um, kind of inform a little bit on, um, you know, my thoughts about, um, you know, Duke Nukem Forever, this build, and also kind of kind of setting the record straight a little bit, just a little bit that, um, you know, the, who should we really blame for the, the disaster that was Duke Nukem Forever? You know, was it Randy Pitchford and Gearbox? No, you can blame them for, Mali for Alien Isolation. Uh, did I say Alien Isolation? I, I think I said Alien Isolation in the beginning. Um, I want to make it clear. Then. Not Alien Isolation. Alien vs. Uh, what is it called now? I can't even remember the name of it. <laughs> it's um, Aliens Colonial Marine. Oh, jeez. Wrong game. Aliens Colonial Marine. Alien Isolation is actually not, not a great game either, but it, it's, it's a hell of a lot better than uh, Colonial Marine. You can blame Gearbox and Randy Pitchford for, for that game. Um, but uh, when it comes to Duke Nukem Forever, blame George Broussard, J blame Scott Miller, and blame Joe Siegler. Anyway, tell us what you guys think in the comments section. How do you feel about talking about Duke Nukem Forever in 2022 after so many years? Crazy, right? All right. See you guys later.